So I'm just getting ready to put the rear end back in uh, as a test fit. And uh, you can see, I think, I think you can see clearly there beside the jack stands, the blue jack stands, you can see the pieces that I've bolted to the frame and the box section. Uh, you'll notice over on the left hand side that I have the angle finder on there. I've checked everything. I've checked the truck frame, uh, the front axle, uh, to those two spring perches, the, the 3x3 box section. Everything's level. Everything's dead on. Uh, no issues there at all. I'm real happy with the, with the squareness of the whole thing. So what I'm going to do here now, and I won't video the, the shackles going on, I'm going to put the rear shackles back in place on the leaf springs, and that way I'm going to be able to lower this down and know that it's, uh, that it's lined up, and then we'll allow the saddles on the front there to, uh, to mate up with those 3-inch box sections. Once I get that done, I can go ahead and mark it up so that I get those lined up right. Uh, those box sections, again, are just tacked at this point. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that everything worked out here. Uh, and again, once, uh, once I have the rear end lined up and everything's marked up and I know where everything's going to go, nice thing about bolting this together, I can pull it back out, I can pull the pieces out, I can weld them in a good position uh, for me. I don't have to try and, and work around anything. Uh, and then, you know, putting it in for the final time, we'll just bolt it back up and should be good to go. So I'll, uh, I'll show you some more when I get to the point where I'm going to lower this down and, uh, and put the fronts in place. Hi there, welcome back. So I'm working away on these spring mounts for the, uh, for the rear end of the Econo line. And uh, I think I had some footage for you there. I showed you that we set the truck down on the leaf springs the other night. So I got it in place, everything lined up, uh, everything went really well. I lowered it down on, on these mounts, had the rear spring perches done up. Uh, so everything was located properly and stuff. Measured it up side to side, we're bang on, uh, kind of cool. We didn't have all the weight on the truck yet. Uh, I was keeping just a little bit of pressure off because uh, these pieces are just tack welded on here. There are a couple pretty good tacks, but they're just tack welded on. So I wanted to make sure that everything was lining up. Wheelbase on this truck is listed as 90 inches. And with where we had it sitting, it measured 89 and three quarters. So I'm, I'm really confident that we've got the rear end in the right spot. Um, super strong on these, these new perches. This, I believe this is really gonna fix the frame issue. Uh, it's nice, uh, the, the load is distributed along the frame rail uh, to the sections that are good. Uh, we've totally covered over the, the rotten sections. Uh, this side is the passenger side. Um, I had to notch this because of a seam in the box floor that runs through there. There's really no, no load or anything out here. Um, what I did is the saddle on the front of the, the leaf spring on the mount with it in position I was able to outline it really well uh, on that piece. So the, uh, the process now, uh, I was just gonna show you. This is the passenger side, and the passenger side frame rail was good enough that all I had to do was distribute the load of this on the, uh, on the frame rail, uh, and I did that by sandwiching the bottom and the one side uh, so there's a piece sitting inside the frame rail. I'll, I'll put a picture of that in the video here. Uh, there's a piece sitting inside the frame rail. This sandwiches together 
uh, makes it nice and strong. On the driver's side, sorry for the noise, on the driver's side, the situation was a little bit different uh, in that they had, uh, first off, the corrosion was worse on the driver's side uh, and it required so what had happened somewhere along the way on the driver's side and I'll post a picture of this because there's a couple pictures you may even have noticed in in a previous video uh, somewhere along the way and I, I don't want to categorize or stereotype anybody but somebody thought they were doing some kind of a repair by stick welding a piece of angle iron on the bottom inside corner of the frame rail. Uh, no doubt they thought they were trying to strengthen it for some reason. I'm going to guess the, the big divots in the box floor, the, the large dent, I've seen that kind of thing before. Not saying for sure because I wasn't there, I don't know for sure about this, but I'm thinking it was hay bales. Uh, if hay bales are dropped on a soft spot on a box floor like that, they'll make a, a big curve like that. It, it all makes sense. My guess is as this thing got tired and the, the metal got thin on those mounts, probably dropped a hay bale in the back and that's what cratered those mounts, uh, caused them to fold up and then of course the rear perches just whacked the back of the frame and dented it and and then it was just sitting on the frame so what what they were trying to accomplish with this piece of angle iron i'm i'm not really sure because uh, it didn't provide a whole bunch more strength uh, there is a dent on the frame rail just where they put the angle iron so i don't know if they ran over something a rock in a field i i don't know uh, but anyway, they, for some reason they thought they had to put this piece of angle on. What they did is because the piece of angle iron had no, didn't appear to have any finish on it, there was no undercoating, there was no, uh, nothing used between the two, the two pieces of steel. Uh, all it really did was trap dirt in there and just promote the, the corrosion, the rusting of the frame rail and the piece of angle iron. Um, knocking the welds off wasn't very tough to do and when I did even the piece of angle iron I was able to to just bend it over my knee it had corroded that much it looks like it was probably you know eighth inch or better uh, when it started out actually probably three sixteenths or something um, you know so it was substantial but it had just rotted away and the result was it wound up rusting the edge of the frame rail and another section um, just in front of the shock mount. So what I had to do on the driver's side is I had to build this piece so that it goes around the frame rail and the piece that I did inside, I did the same thing where it's, it's a U-shape rather than just on the outside um, and when that's all sandwiched together it makes it nice and strong and it covers up all the all the rust holes if you will uh, well that's what they are is rust holes so it covers all that up makes it nice and clean and tidy uh, and again my plan here uh, just to get back to what I'm doing now I'm going to uh, oh and I should show you is able to mark the uh, the spring saddle on this side as well so I can get it welded in the right position. So the job now is to, uh, I fired up the compressor, I'm going to clean up where I'm going to weld, I'm going to finish weld these on um, as nicely as I can. Uh, I hope it'll be pretty good. Uh, it, it'll certainly be strong and stuck together. Uh, so I'll finish welding that then I'm going to clean these pieces up. I'm going to put some, uh, hopefully some epoxy primer, I'm thinking, on these pieces. Uh, oh, pardon me. Then I'll weld the spring saddle on here. Uh, so that will be welded right to this piece. Uh, I'm not going to bolt that or anything. We're going to weld it right on. 
it'll fit real nice. Uh, so I'll get that welded on. Then once I have that done, I'm going to put some kind of an epoxy primer on all of this. Then I'm going to use undercoating so that when I put it in, there's undercoating between all the surfaces. Uh, you know, we've got good corrosion resistance. Will that work forever? No. Uh, will it work for as long? Well, it'll work for the rest of my life. And, you know, I'm, I'm guessing it would be decades before there would be any kind of issue with it. Uh, so that's my plan for putting this back in is to use a lot of undercoating, make sure that we, uh, we have everything covered. And then, of course, and this is part of why I made this a bolt-in piece, is once these are welded onto the springs, then we'll roll the rear end under uh, and lower the truck down, bring these up into position, get them on the frame, and then all we have to do is put the bolts in and get them tightened back up and and we're there. Uh, so again, I don't have to try and get under the back and lay on my back and have hot steel from welding dropping on my chest or my face or whatever. Uh, well, I'll wear a helmet so it won't be on my face. But, uh, you know, I don't, I, I'm not that good a welder uh, to, to get under there and do that. And of course, there's the issues with the zinc coating on the frame and everything else. So I, I think this will work real well. The number of, of holes, uh, bolts that we have distributing the load here, um, I, I, I'm sure it's way stronger than it was from the factory. Uh, and it certainly cleans everything up, tidies everything up. And I'm pretty sure that when somebody gets under, under there to do a safety, they'll, uh, if they even notice what's going on, uh, they'll realize that this is a, a pretty solid repair. So that's my task for right now. I want to finish the welding on these, clean these up, put them on the saddles, weld them onto the saddles, and then I'll be ready to reinstall the rear end. So we'll be back to you as soon as I get a bunch of this done. Thank you.